Hello, are you there? Well, we're here. Want the soap that's pure and gentle? Come on, come on, swing to Swan. Lever Brothers, the makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, presents the Burns and Allen Show with Paul Whiteman. Our singer, Jimmy Cash, yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the six hits and a miss, and George Burns and Gracie Allen. Well, today is the season's first meeting of Gracie Allen's club, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Last year, George said the girls couldn't meet at his home again. He put his foot down. As we look in now, George is about to put his other foot down. Gracie, Gracie, will you come out of there a minute? Look, Gracie, I'm starved. I haven't had any breakfast. Is the meeting about over? Oh, we haven't even started. Blanche Morton, Clara Bagley, and Tootsie Sagwell haven't arrived yet. Well, then, what have you girls been talking about? Blanche Morton, Clara Bagley, and Tootsie Sagwell. <laughs> Look, I've got to get some food. I'm going into that, uh, into that other room and break that meeting up. <laughs> Change your mind, dear? Yes, no man can face that on an empty stomach. Uh, what are they laughing at? Well, they can't wait for Blanche Morton to come in with one of those idiotic hats of hers. <laughs> Fine way to talk about a club member. But, George, you should see Blanche's new hat. <laughs> it's the silliest thing. It has a big bunch of grapes in one side and three sunflowers on the other side and a stuffed seagull sticking up in the front and ribbons hanging down the back. <laughs> well, uh, that sounds pretty silly. Sure, nobody's wearing ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> well... Get these gals out of here. I'll see you later. I'm going out to eat. Oh, wait, George. Yes? Uh, on your way back, will you buy a present for my brother, Willie? He's going in the army, you know. All right. What do you want me to get him? Well, he said they might send him to Iceland, so you, you better get him a nightshirt. Oh, no, in fact, buy him three nightshirts. I'll sew them together. You're going to sew three nightshirts together? Mm-hmm. The nights are much longer up in Iceland. <laughs> Yes, and I'll get him 2,000 sleeping pills, too. Yeah. Come in. Hello, Gracie, dear. Why, Blanche Morton, how are you, Blanche? Oh, wonderful. There's no use asking how you are, Gracie. You look simply radiant. Oh, it's so nice seeing you again. Hello, Mrs. Morton. How do? <laughs> are the girls here yet, Gracie? Well, yes, most of them, Blanche. They're in the library. Go right in. All right. I was That's telling you, I got it. Why, my friend! What a perfectly adorable hat! Sweet bunch of girls. If you save the milk, be sure to put it in the saucer. Well, <laughs> Gracie, I've got to go. Oh, wait, 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 wait George. Yeah. Uh, don't get Willie a nice shirt for Iceland. That's silly. Oh, yeah, sure. That's ridiculous. Yeah, get him a yo-yo. <laughs> they, they might send him to Egypt. A yo-yo? Uh-huh. He's always wanted one, but he's too lazy to make it go up and down. Well? Well, in Egypt, they ride on camels, so Willie just sits and holds the yo-yo, and, and the, the camel, camel goes, goes up and down. <laughs> it's silly of me not to figure that out. I certainly am. Come in. Why, Clara Bagley. Oh, Gracie, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, oh that's all right. We can't start the meeting until Tootsie Sagwell gets here. Oh, I've got the most miserable headache. That's why I brought this ice bag with me. Oh, well, here, Clara, take off your hat and put the ice bag on your head. There, oh. now, you'll feel better in a few minutes. Now, go into the library. The girls are right there now. So and I say, I'm good. Why, Clara, what a perfectly adorable hat! <laughs> with these dames, Harper Bazaar must fold up. Gracie, if you can see if you can break up this hen party, I'm going out and and and. Hi, George. Hello, Gracie. Oh, good morning, Bill. Hello, Bill. Well, what's wrong with you, George? You look about as happy as General von Bach with a calendar in one hand and a thermometer in the other. <laughs> I'll tell you what's wrong. On account of Gracie, I'm starving. Oh, brother, are you confused? <laughs> You certainly are a scream. <laughs> well, I guess the girls are getting impatient in there. I'll go in and tell them we'll start as soon as Tootsie gets there. Come on, Bill. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. The house is overrun with a bunch of gabby women. Well, you know, I sympathize with you, George. If there's one thing that gets on your nerves, it's a gabby dame. That's murder. Come on, let's go. You know, one of them collared me on a street corner just now and almost talked me to death, mm. George. All I said was good morning. And, brother, that did it. She comes right back with what's new. 
Well, I had to answer, so I told her that Swan is new. The new white floating soap that's great for washing dishes because it gives you suds faster than other floating soaps, even in hard water. The Gabby woman. Oh, brother. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. <laughs> Well, I tell you, I tried to tear myself away from her, George, but quick as a flash, she shoots another question at me. Is that so, she said. Oh, yes, very talkative, very talkative. Come on, I'm starved. I've got to... <laughs> well, George, I couldn't walk away without saying yes, so I said it. Yes, I said. Swan is the mild, pure soap that not only gives you suds for dishes, but suds for every soap and water job in the house. Baby gentle suds that are so easy on your hands. Yeah, by now she talked your ear off. Oh, both of them. Yeah, two ears, yes, yes. Well, I thought sure I'd cut the conversation short, see, but oh, no. Oh, no. Just as I'm tearing myself away, what do you think she says? Goodbye. Oh, what a tongue lash. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, I says. Well, Swan is more than a goodbye. It's terrific. Why, you can break each bar of Swan in two and get two swell cakes of soap. One to use in the kitchen for dishes and cleaning, and the other to use in the bathroom for your hands and face or for your tub or shower. Bill, please, breakfast. I'll order swan soap on toast. Oh, well, okay, that's all anyway. I finally tore myself away. Well, fine, fine. Come on, I'm stuck. Say, Bill, what's that you're holding in your hand? Well, what do you know? It's the lapel off that woman's coat. <laughs> That was nice tearing, nice tearing. Bill, come on. Oh, George, I'm glad you're still here. Uh, never mind that yo-yo for Willie. Sure, too silly. Yes. Get him a picture frame. He might go to Alaska. A picture frame? Yes, I'll put a picture of my sister Bessie in it, and he can hang it in the barracks. Sister Bessie? Maybe the rest of the boys would rather have a picture of Lana Turner. Oh, don't worry. After the boys have been in Alaska a few months, Bessie will look just as good to them. <laughs> Well, okay, okay, okay. Go back to the meeting. Oh, Grace, you just it's the cutest thing. Blanche Morton said in her opinion, George Bird was absolutely... Well, let's go, George. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I want to hear the rest of that. <laughs> well, George, looks like we'll never know, doesn't it? Come on, come on. This is Paul Whiten. Jimmy Cash has picked a mighty popular tune for a song tonight. It's White Christmas. Okay, Jimmy. The sun is shining, the grass is green, the orange and palm trees wave. There's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, L.A. all these petty discussions and get right down to business. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Maggie Ettinger. She says that she's only 35. Well, personally, I think she's very honest and straightforward. I've known her for years and she's always said she's 35. <laughs> now, settle down, girls. Now, read the minutes. <clears throat> uh, the last weekly meeting of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society was supposed to be held at the home of Mrs. Gruskin. 
But Mr. Gruskin locked all the doors and threatened us with a garden hose. <laughs> it was then decided that the meeting should be held at the home of Mrs. Taylor, whose husband was confined to his bed with a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Before the meeting, we all showed our appreciation by gathering around Mr. Taylor and singing, for he's a jolly good fellow. Uh, by the way, Mrs. Taylor, how is your husband? Oh, he's at the Good Samaritan now. <laughs> well, that's nice. Such a lovely hospital. Well, back to the minute. <laughs> the, um, the uh, president of the club, Mrs. George Burns, then made our annual friendship award. This year, the congenial spirit of our organization was best represented by those two lifelong friends, Mrs. Martin and Mrs. Daggett. Um, the, um, the award was made in the form of two china lovebirds, one of which was slightly cracked. In the, in the struggle to see who would get the one without the crack, both lovebirds were broken. <laughs> Mrs. Martin lost a tooth and Mrs. Bagley sustained bruises and lacerations. <laughs> if Clara Bagley was in such a stuff, never, <laughs> never in the history of our club has this honor been so richly deserved. At the conclusion of the meeting, our hostess, Mrs. Taylor, served spaghetti, which she said was made from an old family recipe. It was delicious. Oh, that's too crazy. Uh, Miss Sagwell later on went into Mrs. Taylor's kitchen, and uh, she reported that she found several empty cans and that the name of the old family which made the recipe was Heinz. <laughs> Wait, of all the low, snoopy tricks. And that concludes the minute, girls. Now, is there any new business? Uh, may I have the floor, Madam President? The uh, chair recognizes Miss Sagwell. What is it, Tootsie? Well... As you know, we're having a lot of trouble getting new members for our club because so many women are busy with war work. But I have an idea. You have? Mm -hmm. Let's take some men in our club. Gracie, Gracie, can I see you a minute? Oh, all right, then. Yeah. Excuse me, girl. Gracie, isn't that silly meeting over? If you girls were doing something important like war work, I wouldn't mind. Well, we do war work, George. We knit all the time. Well, we've had sweaters and things sent back to us from every camp in the country. <laughs> no, but those silly discussions you have in there. Why don't you discuss something important like the shortage of meat or the... Oh, all right, dear. Now, don't hmm. get excited. We can talk it over quietly. <laughs> sit down. Sit down, dear. Calm yourself. Okay, okay. I'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, down that silly duck. He's always underfoot. He wasn't that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I'm sorry I sat on him. <laughs> oh, now hush her, hush. Herm and Daddy and I are discussing the meat situation. <laughs> What's that? Well, you see, Herman, there's a shortage of meat in this country. That's because we ship a lot of it abroad to our brave allies and our boys fighting all over the world. See? Uh-huh. No. People on the home front, like your mommy and your daddy, must eat less meat. After all, we don't want our fighting men to go hungry, do we? Uh-uh. Now, uh, what, what would you do to anybody who tried to take the meat away from our soldiers? <laughs> no. That's right, Herman. So our government suggests that we limit ourselves to two and a half pounds of meat a week for each person. In that way, we all have our share. And then, too, when we have a, a meat rationing... <laughs> rationing. Well, you see, rationing means that everybody, rich and poor alike, shares what there is equally. That's the American way. <laughs> oh, you bet. And the time to start cutting down on the meat we eat is right now, before rationing. After all, there are still large supplies of other things to eat instead, such as uh, eggs, uh, fish, poultry. <laughs> What's poultry? Well, uh, chicken. Uh, uh, or uh, turkey. Uh, or uh, a duck. Uh-uh. <laughs> Poultry is delicious. <laughs> oh, now, baby darling, Mama wouldn't eat you in a million years. Uh. Yes, but Papa might. 
วานเจ้าวานเจ้าวาน I'll go on her, then off to your room. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Look at him waddle off. Yeah, he's got the cutest drumsticks. <laughs> well, I've got to go back to the meeting, George, and I'll tell the girls what you said. And talk about uh, you can talk about pooling too, about pooling their cars and other things. In times like these, we should share and share alike. All right, dear, I will. Well, I'm not going to do it. And now, girls, 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 I have something very important to say. I've just been having a little talk with George, and he says from now on we girls should pool things. Pool our cars, pool our food. Well, as long as we don't have to pool George. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't think of it, Clara. Now, uh, we're going to start right away, girls. We will pull everything we can. Well, that's a very good idea. Yeah, I know. Where will we start? Oh, I know. We'll pull George's cigars. You girls divide them up and take them home to your husband. Oh, 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 Henry, husband. Is just be oh but remember, girls. Remember, this is share and share alike. So after your husbands have smoked half of each cigar, bring what's left back to George. Oh, we will. Oh, we'll oh, we'll oh, 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 Many years ago, we recorded a miniature classic called Manhattan Serenade. Now it's all dressed up and it's the number one hit, which just goes to show you can't keep a good tune down. That night in Manhattan was the start of it. We lived it and we loved every part of it. Proud of you because of what you said. Our club has already buckled down and started fooling things. Well, I just saw my duty. Oh, and... just think, your speech made us better Americans. Oh, 
was nothing a fireside chat couldn't have done. Oh, you know, dear, I think you're just as good a speaker as the president. Now, Gracie, let's not be silly. Me as good as the president. That's ridiculous. My friends, <laughs> he's better than I am. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm proud of you. If I had my choice of all the husbands in the world, I'd still take you. Well, thanks. Let people say I'm crazy. Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> what do we get? I mean every word of it. I-, I think you're a great man, George. And you know what I always say? Great men in the stand remind us footprints make our lives sublime. And if in time we are departing, we can leave ourselves behind. <laughs> yes. That's, that's what uh, I always say. Yeah, that's one of my favorites, too. Well, I think I'll make myself comfortable and finish that story in the Saturday evening post. Uh, where are my slippers? Harry Morton has them. Harry, Harry Morton? Well, I told you we already buckled down and started pooling things here. You're in a slipper pool. Uh, a, a slipper pool? Well, it's really more of a clothing pool. Harry Morton took your slippers, your bathrobe, and your lounging pajamas. Now, uh, Gracie, that's uh, the silly... Oh, George, he said that you can go over and help yourself to any of his suits. Really? Yes. Here. He left you these pawn tickets. <laughs> Oh, fine. Gracie, you see... Oh, I'm so proud of you. This was all your idea. You're a great fan, George. Oh, all right. I'll do it the hard way. Without slippers, I'll read the Saturday evening post. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You're in a magazine pool, too. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Gruskin took your magazine and left you one of hers. What magazine did she leave? Oh, you love it. The Welder's Weekly. Now, wait a minute. You're a great man, Oh, George. sure, 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 sure. A barefooted great man with nothing to read. Well, I'm going upstairs to shave. George, was General Grant a great man? Well, of course he was. You're just like him. I'm like General Grant? Mm-hmm. I've seen his picture, and I don't think he had a razor either. <laughs> Gracie, don't tell mm-hmm. me. A shaving, a shaving pool, pool. Yeah. And Mr. Badley took your razor and your brush and your shaving cream. Well, that leaves me in fine shape. But it's Cheryl and Cheryl like George. In exchange, you get a derby hat. A derby hat? What's that got to do with shaving? You put your old lace in it. Gracie, when I... You're to- a great, a great man, man, George. Yes, I'm great, great, great. I wonder where they ask for now, huh? Go oh, uh, Gracie, hide me, hide me. Trouble, Bill. Well, Tootsie Sagwell's outside, and I don't want her to see me. <laughs> Oh, Tootsie, Sagwell. <laughs> oh, I thought it was you I was running after. I'd recognize you on a desert island. I wish. <laughs> well, for so long, Tootsie, I have to run. Oh, wait, Bill. You know, you know what you asked me to do last week? <laughs> well, I did. Oh, Tootsie, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I sent for one of those swan encyclopedias. Oh, Oh, well, that's a great book, Tootsie. <laughs> and, and I know you love it. Oh, wait, Bill. I did something for you. Now, how about doing something for me? Like walking home with me. Well, uh, um, Tootsie, how do I know you really got the Swan Encyclopedia? Does the one you sent for have 832 pages? Does it have over a million words on more than 15,000 subjects from art to zoology? Are you, are you sure that you have the Swan Encyclopedia? Well, of course, Bill. Hmm. Well, uh, does it have a special March of Events section covering world news and events right up to this past September, huh? I know I've got the Swan Encyclopedia, Bill. Come over to my house and see it for yourself. I, uh, I keep it right in the middle of the sofa. <laughs> well, some other time, oh, Tootsie, I... Oh, Bill, I... I thought you might come over and explain the war maps to me. Oh, now, Tootsie, the maps in the Swan Encyclopedia don't need explaining. Those eight pages of war maps in color make it easy for anyone to follow the world situation at a glance. In fact, whenever I listen to the news, I keep my Swan Encyclopedia maps right in front of me, and I mark important developments right on them. Oh! That's a wonderful idea. Why don't you bring your war maps over to my house and we'll compare them? I think it'd be nice to get our maps together. <laughs> oh, what I say? Yeah. <laughs> now, Tootsie, listen to reason. My goodness, you know that anybody can get a swan encyclopedia by sending 25 cents in a swan wrapper 
the Swan Box 25 Racine, Wisconsin. Is that right? Yes. Well, but... thousands of women are sending their quarters and Swan wrappers to Swan Box 25 Racine, Wisconsin, and those women don't expect me to come to their houses. But, but, but Bill, I'm, I'm different from other women. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's just the trouble, Tootsie. <laughs> Goodbye. If you and Bill just never get together. Oh, well, maybe I'm just as smart to keep him guessing. Goodbye. <laughs> what a day, what a day. Gracie, Gracie, where are the aspirin? I've got a terrible headache. Oh, that's too bad. Why don't you take some cod liver oil or some citronella? Well, what's wrong with aspirin? Well, you're in a medicine pool. <laughs> a medicine pool? You're a great man, I know, George. I know. I ought to be in Grant's tomb. Hmm. Uh, come in. Oh, it's little Billy Mock from next door. How are you, Billy? Okay. Well, come on, turn on the radio. Turn on the radio? You heard me. I'm in your radio pool. <laughs> now, just a minute, Oh, kid. now, George, I told him to come over. Well, okay. What do you want to hear, Sonny? A little music? Music? Well, get him. <laughs> turn on Frank Fearless, the commando. Why, for two cents, I would... George, George. Well, okay. And so, bound and gagged. Weak from a dozen knife wounds, suffering from the four bullet holes in his chest and choking from the deadly knocks like that, Frank Phyllis gives a sigh of irritation. His boat has sprung a leak. Do you need to get tomorrow night for another great oh, install of Frank Phyllis the commando? Now I miss the whole program. Mm. Well, I'm tickled to death. Now beat it. No, no, you no. said it. Believe me, lady, if he was my father instead of yours, I'd... Go on, out, 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 out. <laughs> You're a great man, oh, George. Oh, stop that, stop that. I told you the pool thing, but I didn't mean only pool my thing. Either you do it the right way, or you don't do it at all. Do you understand? Yes, dear. And remember that. Yes, dear. That's just an idea to you. I must be nuts. Yes, dear. <laughs> well, I'm going upstairs. Only other thing I own. Might have known this would happen. Oh boy, am I worn out. I'll jump into bed. Oh, does this bed feel good? Certainly does. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Harry Morton. Yeah, I'm in your bed pool. Stay <laughs> for Curry and send in for your Swan Encyclopedia now, because honestly, we're afraid we might have to withdraw our offer pretty soon. It's a great buy, the kind of book everyone can use, especially children who have homework to do. To so send your quarter and swan wrapper in tonight, send them to Swan, Box 25, Racine, Wisconsin. That's Swan, Box 25, Racine, Wisconsin. We'll send your big 832-page encyclopedia to you immediately. Remember, Swan now brings you two of radio's top shows, George Burns and Gracie Allen every Tuesday night and Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou every Friday night over another network. And now till next week, this is Bill Goodwin for George and Gracie saying... Well, I swan. How about you? Good night. Try spry. You'll find the baking you turn out fluffy and light. Try spry. You're sure to hear your family shout. What a delight. For cake, pie, donuts, the things you try. Try, try. What's that you say you're going to try today? Why, sure. Try, try. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.